Hi everyone, my name is Eric. I am a former competitive figure skater and this is my figure skating reaction series. For those of you who don't know me, I am a five-time U.S. National Championships competitor through the senior level. I trained for about 15 years in the Chicagoland area with top coaches, including most recently Olympic coach Denise Myers. So long story short, I know my stuff. Let's get started. Marvin, we're starting. <laughs> okay, wait, can we see all of ourselves? Okay, um, okay so hello. <laughs> Super excited to have with me today, Marvin. How did you pronounce it? Ow. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Marvin Al, who is a mainstay and ever, sorry, I just have some notes over here. So excuse me if I'm looking over here. An ever so bright and lovely figure skater in the Bay Area. Marvin has been skating for over 20 years now. <laughs> and he has landed triple axles. It can literally still do crazy triples, literally not having skated or trained for years. Very talented guy. Um, anyway, super excited to have you on, Marvin. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So today we're going to be discussing the men's event at the 2022 Beijing Olympic men's figure skating. Sorry, I just said men's event. Uh, figure skating event. And yeah, so I think what we're going to do is focus on uh, the top six a bit more. So t we'll talk a little bit more about them. But first, we'll also just um, talk a little bit about some of the people outside of the top six that we noticed from both or either the short and long programs. Um, and anything I'm missing? Yeah. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. Yay! Let's start with Marvin. <laughs> Okay, I, we have the uh, the people right here also if you need a reference. <laughs> yeah. Anyone, uh, I guess, going from bottom to up, um, or I can go first if you want. You go first. Okay, I'll go first. For me, for one, uh, number one, I'm very sad about Roman Sadowski in general throughout the whole Olympic Games. This time it just wasn't his time. I mean, he got to come, which is really great and happy for him, but... Yeah, it just wasn't his time. I don't know what, what was going on. I don't know if there's anything specific, whether physical or mental or, or whatever, but he was just not on his game. He, he couldn't seem to land many things and pulled off, even though he's a very talented skater and we've seen a lot of great, um, great programs by him in the past. So that was one thing that I was a little bit sad about. Um, and then Donovan Carrillo really impressed me, Mexican skater. I feel like he's been blowing up a little bit on, I don't know, social media and YouTube and stuff like that. Um, just love his energy, his vibe, his smile, his like joy in figure skating and really like talented as well. Huge triple axles. Um, and also just one of the, so I guess the first Mexican skater to compete at the Olympics in 30 years. And also um, the first person, Mexican skater to make it to the long program. In the men's event so that's really awesome so i was really impressed by him and then and then okay we talk about most love maybe a little bit later actually um mark kondradiak of russia really great in the team event i think he gave it is all there but kind of let it go here i think his team event was his main thing and it was where he was going to win his medal maybe um for uh from roc um, and so, yeah, anyone else? Kevin Amos is really good, but I don't have too many comments on him. Um, Marisi, okay, we'll talk about that in a second together, actually. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, those are some of the people. Okay, Boyang Jin, amazing quad lutz. I feel, like that's, I feel bad, but that's like my only comment I ever have about Boyang Jin. But great quad lutz slash jumps. Um, yeah. We can talk about maybe down grass one sec. But anyways, out yeah. of those skaters or any of the other ones, what are your thoughts, Marvin? Uh, not uh, excluding the top six for now. Yeah, I mean, I agree with most of what you or all of what you said. I think mm. um, Roman. I think he's like one of the most beautiful skaters out there today, and mm. I was really looking forward to watching his long program. I love the music, the choreography mm. is gorgeous, and I think when he's when he's like on top of his game, it's like that program is magical. And so that's really what I was looking forward to. Um, Donovan, I was really happy to see. 
Um, you know, I'm all for representation when it comes to figure skating. I don't think there's enough diversity when it comes to the sport. Yes, yes, and I yes, think, yes, yes. you know, anything we can do to push more diversity in this uh, world, I think we need to make that happen somehow. And so yes. I think um, just seeing a beautiful skater, a gorgeous face on the ice, <laughs> I think, yes, I just, I'm all for it. Um he does have interesting jump techniques. Yes. Okay, his triple toe is a little bit of a toe axle, to be yeah. honest, was one of the main things we noticed. Um, yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of, um, kind of reminds me of the guy from Georgia. Uh, of Maurice? Yeah, like, it's oh. very, like, I mean, it's not like it's kind of toe axle-y, but also it's very, like, I don't know, it's uh, the toe kick. It's just, it's <laughs> not, uh, I don't know. Not I think there's, it's not... I think he gets the job done, mm -hmm. which I think is most important at this point for him. Yeah. But I think it'd be interesting to, and I think this is true with any figure skater who are from a country where you're not only underrepresented, but you lack a lot of resources. I think it's not uncommon to see these skaters with so much talent. Um, not necessarily um, end their career due to poor technique, but I think it'd be interesting to offer him better resources that helps him understand yeah. like how he could level up and stage. i think he has been actually yeah. training more with i think in the cricket club or something don't quote me on that but mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i think he's he is getting there um but yeah it's also you know when skating technique and, and i don't know his specific background this is more of a general comment it's like when you have technique from when you were really young um that often gets carried through and it can be really hard to change so yeah. the technique you learn on your uh, double jumps mm -hmm. will sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, affect triple and then quads. So, I mean, um, absolutely, it's a perfect example of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he has an amazing triple axle, mm -hmm. though, so really happy about him. And I'm, I love a gorgeous triple axle. <laughs> yes. um, I think Boyan Jin, he's the other one that mm -hmm. I was looking forward to as well. I think, you know, to your point, I feel like I only know him because of his LUTs. Um, yeah. <laughs> gorgeous LUTs jump. I think he, I think in general, he's a beautiful jumper. There's something about his skating that I don't find very memorable, if that makes sense. Um, I remember his club LUTs. I mean, yeah, but I think, I don't know, yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know, if you look yeah. at a skater who skates to choreography like Adam Rippon versus Boyan Jin, I think there's a clear difference in, yeah. in terms of how like Adam Rippon, you know, skates to the music versus Boyan Jin, where it kind of seems like it's just going through the motion. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I think a lot of skaters in the IJS are doing that these days. That's but, true, which yes. I have an opinion on, but... <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I think this did quite well um, this time around. Yeah. Um, Okay, I guess in the top, well, in the top seven, I guess really quickly, I think I have a couple of comments on Daniel Grassel. Let me just look at them really quick. He seemed a little bit yes. underscored in the short. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's world ranked number one, so uh, which is which is really interesting to see. The world rankings are kind of weird, and I feel like we saw that um, while we were uh, while each skater went up. Um, but I guess I think his quad lutz was counted as like under or. Q or something like that, which gave him less GRE, and usually he would probably get a much more positive GRE. Do you think so his is kind of weird? Yeah, I mean, his jumping technique's a little bit weird. Like, people <laughs> say that, you know, it jumps like this a little bit. Um, I don't mind it, like, too, too much. Mm -hmm. I feel like for jumps, um, whatever technique you can do a quad lutz with, that's I already agree. pretty impressive. I agree. Um, <laughs> and he's really consistent. That's, that's true. really cool to Consistency see. Consistency is key. Consistency I agree. is key. But yeah, technique maybe is a little bit. You know, someone else I forgot to mention, Kevin Amos. Uh -huh. I think so happy to see him skate as well. I think he's such a gorgeous skater. I think it's very um, modern, mm -hmm. and we love a good modern skater. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, kind of. You know, I was hoping he would place higher, but I mean, it is what it is at this point. I yeah, mean, I'm just happy that he got to go to the Olympics. Yeah. So, yeah. And both French guys had that really cool, like, flippy thing. Um, maybe it's a French thing. <laughs> maybe it's a French thing. I don't know. But that was pretty awesome. Um, yes. Okay. So let's talk about the top six um, and spend a little bit more time on them. Starting off with Jason Brown. Ah! Okay. Can I just say, yes. I love Jason Brown. Mm -hmm. I think he's a gorgeous skater, probably one of the best skaters in terms of like 
basic staying skills mm-hmm. when it comes to like edge quality, choreography, spins gorgeous. Um, I think he's made a lot of improvement over the years mm-hmm. when it comes to his jumping. And I love seeing that. I love seeing progress. I think that's me just working in a role outside of figure skating where I focus on learning and development. Mm-hmm. I just, I love seeing progress. So to see Jason Brown progress so much in his jumping abilities has been very admirable. Although I still um, never got really got the quad, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true. That's very true. But I think the fact that he, um, you know, he's working towards it. I think it's admirable, especially, you know, as an adult skater myself at this point. I mean, mm-hmm. am I classified as an adult we, we skater are, now? We are all adults. I'm 30 here. years old. <laughs> I'm 24 and I'm an adult. <laughs> I think like, I don't know, it's, it's nice to see like Jason, or not Jason uh, skate the way he is yeah. doing at this point in his life. Um, I think the cinema program is like one of my all time favorites. Yeah. So it's like, a, it's like a masterpiece. It's like Michelangelo. <laughs> yes. I love Jason Brown. I think I probably, I don't even remember what I said in my team event discussion, but I grew up um, training with him, not with the same coach, but he's always at the rink and he works really, really hard. Like, I feel like sometimes if people might be like, oh, if someone doesn't get like a quad or something, maybe they're not working out hard enough. Like, no, like he works so hard. He worked so hard on that triple axel. I was there in his process of getting that triple axel and that was really hard for him. It's a really difficult jump. Um, and he worked so hard on it, and he got it. And his short blasts look beautiful, um, so beautiful in both programs this time. And yeah, just I I, re- I remember. Um, as, I guess it's going a little bit off topic, but I remember uh, uh, his I think junior short, but also was a senior short. I forget what the music is. The question of you or something by oh, someone. Yeah. Remember that was one of my favorite programs. I remember seeing him train that and mm-hmm. train that. Uh, choreography and the kick in the middle and like the this thing before the spin anyways all these things like he has been a talent and also had has you know where he and other people around him that's really been able to cultivate that artistic talent um unlike like most of these other skaters especially in the ijs system really appreciate him you know he was as people were saying like he was two points off from fourth place here like he could have with that triple sow cow mm-hmm. which of course mm-hmm. other people could have landed <laughs> other things too but like he really could have gotten a, a solid fourth mm-hmm. and um and i'm glad that i think he ended up getting components wise um like the second behind nathan chant so it was really clear in the judge's eyes too that he is second i think that should be higher it could have been okay you know i could have been higher but <laughs> maybe i'm biased I, but whatever <laughs> like olympic gold moment it's like that's gonna be first in pcs no matter what probably but um but yeah so he is super super impressive he looked so on this week and i feel like he really um proved a lot of people um not exactly wrong but like people who were like oh Ilya should have gone instead of him which i mean i you know, I said that, and mm-hmm. you know what? Maybe Elliot could have gotten third or second, or I mean, who knows? But he could have also crashed and burned. But like Jason mm-hmm. Brown was in the last warm up group, he was two points off of fourth. Like he's really good and really consistent. You so, know, I will yeah. say, I think what I also like a lot about Jason Brown mm-hmm. is the fact that um, I think out of all the men's skater yeah. at this event, I think he, at least in my opinion, I could totally get a lot of shit for saying this, but. I think he's the only one, in my personal opinion, that demonstrates a lot of, like, maturity in his skating. Yeah. It's very, like, his, like, everything he does is very well thought out. It's, there's, there's a lot of, um, yeah, I mean, it's really well thought out. I mean, yeah. you, I mean, nothing he does is just out of random. And, I don't know, I think, I, I love maturity on ice, and so I think, you know, someone who, anyone that can skate like that, I think, in my opinion, yeah. should be getting higher component scores. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a whole conversation around him where there is a limit to the component scores. So when you get people like Nathan Chen potentially getting really high or maybe inflated uh, components or whatever compared to like a Jason Brown, there's only so much uh, higher Jason Brown can go up in components. And so he actually gets pretty hurt. Whereas the other skaters, like in terms of technical, there's no limit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a conversation to be had about, uh, I think, him being a, sim- a symbol of like why components is so important and also why maybe maybe needs to be readjusted as a result. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, he definitely has a maturity on the ice. Um, and his long, I mean, we talk about it short a lot, but his long is also really beautiful. His um, long is gorgeous. Yeah. I think, oh my God, I totally forgot about his long program. I love his long program. Yeah. I just, I hate the fact that I am so fixated on the Cinderman program because yeah. it's like my all-time yes. favorite. 
Yeah. And I always forget too that like, oh my God, he has all these other programs yeah. that I also absolutely love. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he is great. Um, yeah. Super, super happy for him and excited to see what he does next. Uh, he, How old is he? I don't know. He's probably in the late twenties, and I don't know if he's going to keep competing. He's he's been through three Olympic cycles at this point. He yeah. went in twenty fourteen, then went uh, this time. So, I mean, I feel like he's going to have an amazing skating career in general. Shows, mm-hmm. um, whatever a great else, coach. coach. He could be a really great coach, yeah. actually. Great. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that he could do in the skating world if he chooses to. So yeah. it'll be exciting to see. I hope he like stays like very involved and just like. Rose, you know, we need people like him. Uh, I agree. We need yeah. a lot more people like him in the skating world. Yeah. And I think, I think him being, he's gay, right? Yes, he is now. <laughs> <laughs> he is I mean, officially <laughs> out as well. So that's also great. I think, um, I think this could be a great starting point to also push more diversity on the ice. Yes. And provide more resources for those who are considered underrepresented in the sport. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm all about And yes, gay guys are underrepresented in the skating men's sport because whether, regardless of how many people are actually gay or actually whatever it is, the number of people who are out at the top level, very, very few. Very Adam very was the first one, um, if you guys remember. And then and then Jason now, and it's not that, that many. So that is also really important. Yeah. It's really and, important going yeah. somewhere like China and completely so out. Like, oh, oh not as God. much as like 2014 <laughs> Russia, but still, you know. So yeah. You know, when I was competing and I almost gave up my US citizenship to represent China in figure skating, mm. I was, you know, it was so funny because then we almost went through with it and my parents were like, Are you sure you want to do this? Like, you're so fucking okay. gay. Like, they're not gonna accept you there. And I'm like, holy crap. Well, right? yeah, the citizenship, <laughs> that's yeah. That is true. So it's interesting when skaters really they change their citizenship. Yeah. Like, well, we have to. Well, but that's a whole other conversation. But um, yes, okay. So next, moving on, Junhua Cha. Which one is he again? He's Korean. Oh, he's, and... he's under um, Brian. Brian Orser. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll start off. I think that I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, mm-hmm. I'll start off. Um. But, ouch! That first fall that he had was really bad. And it's so impressive someone like him where you have one of those terrible falls, you just like, boom, slam onto the ground. And then he gets up and does a clean program after that. Like, that's super admirable. Shows what kind of skater and competitor and person that he is. Um. So that was really impressive to Wait, me. Wait, did he fall? He had a really bad fall just at the very beginning. Holy shit, he had a I huge about fall. That. He had a huge fall. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then he yeah, just had a beautiful program in general. Uh, I really like the music. Um, yeah, I had some random specific comments that I'm just not going to mention. I don't know. Um, his triple axle is really telegraphed. Um, so what telegraph me- telegraphing means um, for any pe- any person who doesn't know what that means in skating. I think it's called telegraph. It's when you wait like a long time going to the jump. Usually a hard jump, you're like, I'm like waiting, waiting, waiting. And then I go into the jump mm-hmm. and it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit slow, I think-ish. Um, and just not the most aesthetically pleasing. Obviously he still does it and it's great. Um, but that's just something that I want to comment on. I definitely used to do that into double axle a lot because double axle was my, my I used to do that jump. for some of my jumps too. Yeah. Like I remember when I was training, actually I remember when I was training a quad loop. And I hurt my ankle, and my coach literally said, "Is this a telegraph?" And I'm like, "What do yeah. you mean?" <laughs> so telegraphing also often is uh, correlated, or not correlated. That's not the word, but it comes in conjunction with not the best technique. Yeah. Because um, yeah, because it's just that's not the best to do that. You know, I, when I was doing that, when I was training that jump, I I think it was because I was like overthinking how to do it. And it would get to the point where I would actually end up injured because yeah. I was overthinking it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I had that in the blast, which was the one I got injured on. And then you get injured, and then you get even more skin, and then you telegraph yeah. more. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, telegraphing is definitely a thing. Um, and he still did really well with just one clean quad in the program, in the long program. Um, some, yeah, nice choreography. Uh, some people say maybe a little bit underscore. I don't know. Um with these things also, yeah, being from the Korean Federation that hasn't had that many, especially men who are at the very, very top, um, a lot of times you might get a little bit um, like lower PCS. I don't know. That's it's arguable. So, true. so that's, a, that's a main topic, yeah. Yeah, which I feel like that's a whole other topic of discussion. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, yeah. I forgot. I remember, okay, you know what? I do remember seeing his program, his long program. I do remember that fall now. Mm-hmm. You know, that takes a lot of mental mental endurance, I yeah. guess. Or, I don't know, mental gymnastics. I don't know what the word is. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think anyone that can pull that off has proven that Resilience mentally they also. are so yeah they're very resilient and they know how to think quick on their feet it's very much like I, I remember the fall I don't remember what it looked like but I do remember like anyone that falls like that it's like it brings me back to Mao Zedong in 20, or 20, 2008 when she like slipped on her triple yeah, axel and one. just <laughs> yeah I don't know anyone can come back from we've all had like those that. kind of falls as skaters like we all know what it's like yeah 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 you know I have a lot of respect um, I think, you know, I admire what he's doing, especially for, um, like, I, I think I didn't have a lot of respect for him because he's coming from a country where, like, to your point, there is no male, like, skater at the top. So he's trying yeah. to, kind of like what Kim Yuna did, like, you know, yeah. trying to build, Trailblazer, like, yeah. trailblazing, yeah. Like, I think, I don't know, I think that's such a hard position to be in, yeah. but it's also really rewarding. Yeah. So I think, I'm curious to see how he... Um, grows his career from yeah. there. And it's nice, it's like a parallel I just thought of that, you know, Kim also um, took from Brian Orser and mm-hmm. the Mountain as well, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice parallel, yeah. Um, okay, and the person who got right above him is questionably still coached by Brian Orser, don't know what the exact situation with that is, but um, user Hanyu. Oh, yeah. Hanyu, of course. Um, so yeah, Hanyu definitely uh, didn't have his best outings here. Um, I guess, do you want to start off? Do you want, you want me to go? Oh, no. Okay. You know, I was really hoping he plays at the top. <laughs> I, he almost did. <laughs> I know, right? I'm definitely a Hanyu fan. Um, a fan you, is that what you say? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think he's so gorgeous on the ice. Yeah. Um, I think great, like, jumping technique. I think, um... I think it sucked that he popped his um, sapow in the short program. Yeah. Because literally in that moment, I gasped. And yeah. I thought to myself, oh, wow, he's not going to come back from this. <laughs> yeah. Can we talk about that really quick, though? So why I, was, I had a note about uh, Mozilev, the other guy from R- ROC. And so basically there's a whole thing on the skating internet world, Twitter and stuff. Where people were, um, Hanyu had said there was like a rut on the ice, that's why he popped it, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, people were blaming Moslev. They think Moslev slid like right before him. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay? yes, everything's good. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so, um, anyways, but they were blaming on Moslev and giving him death threats and stuff like that. Like some of the people on social media really did calm it down a little bit um, because. For, for, as a skater, we know we've we've had like we see ruts in the eyes really big. Oh, First of all, I don't know how I've you would done that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yes, me too. First of all, I don't even know how you would know that it's definitely him. Like whatever, but even if it was, that's just like it is what it is. If it was that bad, like Kanye should have gone to like the referee or whatever to like say that's that true. because that's that's for everyone else. You know, if he knew like oh there was a huge rut, then go to the referee. You know, you maybe I don't know like what the exact rules are, but also for the people that are skating after you, like. So, I don't know, that was kind of strange. Uh, and because there's people there that will fill it. That will fill it, yeah. right. That's, like, a thing that can be done. And regardless, like, like people should just not be getting death threats. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't tolerate bullying. We do not tolerate this much bullying. Like, this Olympics has been the, like, most bullying. Maybe because I've been following a little more closely, but I feel like the most bullying I have seen. Like, between Yiju, Beverly Zhu of China, and then I mean, things that are going on with Camilla right now, and then this with most like. It's just, like, too much. So, um, yeah. I agree. I think, you know, if there's something I will not stand for, it's bullying of yeah. any kind. And I think I think this goes back to what I do for a living as well, because I work mm-hmm. in H- oh, people ops. And <laughs> and it's just, I don't, I just don't tolerate it. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's it does nothing for anyone. And I believe that you should be approaching everything with empathy and compassion. Yeah. So I think, and that was not the case for a lot of these skaters, uh, I think, yeah. A little rare, but I do think adults need to be held accountable for what they do. So yes. I think. <laughs> yes. People um, should be held accountable, but um, 
you're, I mean, I'm sure you're more thrilling to the Camilla situation. That's a little bit different situation. Kind of with that. Also not, like, she's not the, you know what I mean? Like the athlete itself, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But anyways, um, anyways, we went off yes. topic. Um, I do, I do, I love, I love Hanyu skating. Yeah. I think, um, his long program, okay, I think his quad axle. Let me yes. talk about that real quick. Real quick, yes. Um, so. great attempt. Happy that I got rectified as a quad axle, I think. Um, yes. Oh, actually, I didn't even realize that might have been the first one. Yeah, it was, that was ratified yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so it was just one one carrot, which yeah. arguably in slow motion, I, sh I might do an analysis on this <laughs> later, um, but it might just be, uh, it, it was really close to the Q, if anything. So I I yeah, I think it was like close Q. to the Q as well. Yeah. Um, great attempt. Um, yeah. Interesting that he fell on his South Cal again. Yeah, um, it was just not his jump, I think, this yeah. two swims, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, because if you, okay, and I'm not saying that Hanyu should hold himself accountable for this, but it's interesting that, you know, after the short program, he said there was a rut when he popped his sound count, That's and then the in the long thing. program, fall on that same jump. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it could be a coincidence, but yeah. I also think, too, like, I don't think there's a need to make excuse if that was what he was yeah, doing. Yeah, and if that really was, again, he should have gone about the other way. And also, yeah. at the end of the day, like, they're, as skaters, like, he hasn't had a beautiful, he can have a beautiful quad set, but yeah. we have off days and off weeks and off times of specific jumps or things that get into our head, physically, mentally. So that does happen. Sorry, people are watching the Super Bowl over there and they're really <laughs> loud. Hopefully not too loud. Um, but yeah, so that does yeah. happen. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, and actually, you know, it kind of, to add on what you just said, you know, I think what people forget is that he's human. Mm -hmm. uh, Camila is human. They're all human in the day. They're yeah. all bound to make mistakes. And I think, I think we need to allow them the psychological safety to um, let the world know, like, yeah, I made a mistake. And I, and, and yeah, like, and I it's hard for him because he's really feels like he's letting down all people. the fans and all yeah. the family fans. One hundred percent. Yeah, it doesn't do anything from a psychological perspective. And I yeah. think. You know, I think there's what I understand the pressure behind it. But I also think too that we need to remember that people are human. Yeah. And I think that Hanyu was just one of those situations where I think despite his excuses, I think I would like to just give him the excuse that he's human. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard for him. You know, it is really hard for him um, because of all his fans, mm -hmm. and then seeming like he's really not the favorite to win a third gold medal and all that stuff, yeah. and the quad axle trying to make history and all that stuff. Um, but we love Hanyu and really beautiful. He's a, he's, he is a legend and he's done so much for the sport. Yeah. Um, he doesn't need a skating. third yeah. like, Olympic gold medal. In fact, yeah, he's, he, yeah. he's already demonstrated he's a legend. He, yes, um, absolutely. No need to prove himself. Yeah. Um, you um, know, I will say, and I'll leave it at this, I think the jump elements that he chose for this season was interesting uh -huh. because if I remember correctly, he has a gorgeous quadruple loop, mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm sure he could still whip out a gorgeous quadruple lutz. I felt like the quads he chose to do this season, I mean, maybe he chose them because they were more comfortable for him, but he has a whole repertoire yeah. of gorgeous quads. Yeah. Why not pick, pick those if there's a chance that... Those That's fun. true. Well, as a quick, well, first of all, he just really wanted the quad axle, right? Oh, yeah, I think it's just that. like he just wants to do yeah. that. And um, his quad lutz is amazing. I have in the other video and the Camilla uh, He'll link analysis it. video. Yeah, I'll try to link it or it's just <laughs> the Camilla pre rotation video. Um, he has no zero pre rotation, but arguably it's actually not even the best because of um, it's like bad for his ankle. I think he got an injury that can't relate to that. So, Quadlets is hard for him. He hasn't landed that many much many times in competition. That's true. And then I think if he doesn't, if he wants to go for that quad axle, he has to go for easier quads that what he can actually can come with. So, so I'm guessing that's like that's the reasoning. But um, yeah, I mean, he pro I mean, he definitely could have gone top three easily with the amount of PCS and all of that oh. given to him um, uh, if he didn't probably go for the quad axle and something else. Like he really easily probably could have done that and trained for all that. Mm -hmm. But but he's a legend, so. Happy about that. Right before we get into the top three, I forgot to mention Marisi really quick. Um, oh my God. I, I'm going to make another video on this, but like, guys, it literally is a, it's, he does quads, only quad styles in the program, like <laughs> short and long. Wow. I slow, I slow myself and I was it's watching the only it. Joke and I was like, oh my God. So, Talented. 
very talented and great. And he has a great club style. You know what I mean? It's like a great club style. You have a great South Cow yourself. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. And a lovely South Cow, good South Cow. But that Taloop is a South Cow. It's crazy. So expect a video on that sometime soon. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, just wanted to put that out there really quick. Okay. Top three. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Shoma Una. Uno. Of Japan. Number three. You know, I love him. Love him, love him, love him. I mean, does he have the greatest technique? No. God, no. Are you kidding me? Mm, a lot of them are questionable. His jumps are kind of wild. Yeah. Like, when he lands, it's like, how are you landing that way? Like, can he you always it? shock me, but he does it. Um, yeah, he does I it. I do love his programs this year. Um, I think... I think, um, you know, I'm happy that he placed where he did. I mean, yeah, I'm just, I, I like the way he skated. I thought, I'm just happy that he um, did what he did. He, he came to play, let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think ever since he started training under uh, Lambiel, I think since that move, uh, since he's done that move, I think his skating, I think there's a lot more joy you can see, uh, not just like, through our competitions, but even like through practice, like you can see that he's just joining himself again. Um, you know, I'm always gonna hope that he'll somehow fix that fucking <laughs> like flip jump, but whatever. I'll leave it there. Yeah, flip is kind of wild. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, he honestly, I think his short programs in both the team event and the uh, the Zola event, where they were so beautiful and good. He was so focused. He has that presence that um, really not many of us top skaters, I think, uh, have. Like, the maturity. Yeah, I think he's so good. He has that knee bend, that beautiful skating. Um, Very expressive. Yeah, really, really, uh, really, really like him. So, yeah, his long program, um, he, it wasn't his Olympic moment, but... I think he deserved to like get top three with everything else I was like seeing uh, at the event, and um, even if he has some questionable technique, like uh, at, at times like the flip, um, he's consistent. He he's I don't know he's he's not consistent always. That is not true. I I was surprised at how consistent actually he was in the Olympics because I feel like I haven't seen him as consistent um, That's true. in previous years. But um, he's a great you know triple. He's like, fast triple axle and all that stuff. So, yeah. across the ice. So, oh, God. yeah, it wasn't his best day, but hey, Medellin again at the Olympics, like really impressive. I'm not mad with where he plays, and I'm no. not going to see him skate the way he did. Yeah, I will say actually in general, um, I was not that mad about how a lot of people were placing this event. I feel like I was in agreement with a lot of things. Um, so I feel like when I'm in agreement, I don't even like, look that hard oftentimes at the, the judges scoring you i'm like oh that makes sense um but whereas i feel like at u.s nationals that was like really like i think a lot of people were so many placed yeah in the way fairly yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of people who i think did some questionable fairly. stuff during their programs but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah whatever <laughs> okay moving on yeah yuma Kag kagiyama he was actually one of, definitely one of the people of the entire event for me. I personally love, I love both of his programs. Um, his long, I feel like, is really big, the gladiator, the music. Um, his jumps are just huge. He floats through the air. I was just saying, wow, every time I, I first watched he's the event. So fast. He skates so, oh, so fast. My God. That quad loop is really impressive when he does it. Um, so I really love Yuma. I think he's, yeah, like, I'm so glad he, he pulled up to the occasion and got second at his first Olympics. And it's impressive. It's really it's impressive. It's really impressive, young. Especially coming from Japan, yeah. where there's so many talented skaters. Yeah, he really rose through. He, yeah, he really rose through the time. He came to play, I think, um, how old is he again? I think he's 18. You know, I am just so excited to see what he does with this for. Yeah. Like, I think if he's already this good and consistent, I think, I kind of think this guy is still in it. I think. Yeah. I mean, what if he becomes like <laughs> almost the next Yuzu, like not the next Yuzu in terms of like Yuzu himself, but just like, you know, mm -hmm. staying at the top of the sport, winning multiple yeah, yeah. Olympics or something like that. Like, that would be really cool to see. Yeah. The longevity is one thing about some of these 
Japanese men that are really cool to see. Like comparing Yuzu on his third Olympics with two gold medals and one fourth place finish, Shoma Uno with two medals, Yuma Kageyama is going to keep going. Comparing that to some of the Russian women, for example, who have been at the top, who you see them once and then they're gone. Um, that's actually, really impressive. Even Russian men, like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. A lot of the Russian men just haven't been at the top, so I don't know. True. Like, oh. But also, just in general, I think I think this might be more prevalent in like Russian figure skating, like, Russian female figure skating. But I noticed, like, even with the men, like, there's not a lot of like longevity. I think. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. I'm of the belief that if you can skate for for like that long in that in your career, like, yeah. it means you. I don't know. I, I think it says a lot about how you skate, how you train, yes, how you yes, prioritize, that is true. like where you're at in life. Yeah. And I think that allows me like more volumes. Yeah. In itself. Volumes. Yeah. Yeah. I think longevity is really helpful for the sport in general. That's why everyone loves Hanyu so much, and he has such a huge fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, it's partially just because he has been in the sport for so long, so you can root for him for so long. Like I feel like. You know, Camila Valieva, a lot of new fans will be like, oh my God, I'm starting to root for someone. She's so good. And then like, I don't know what is going to happen to her in a few years. I hope she stays in the sport and can come back for the next Olympics, but you really just don't know. And yeah. people felt that way about Alina, about Evgenia, and a lot, of, uh, and a lot of other women as well. It's why I, and this is going off topic, and I think this is a whole other video to consider, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also why... Um, the 25-year-old from Russia, um, the one that trains under um, Misha. The uh, guy? No, no, the female. Um, oh, Elizabeth that took Misha. Yes. Uh, uh, I miss her. Wish she okay. was here. It's why I, I, I really wanted to see her at the Olympics. So I think she demonstrates that, especially in Russia, that longevity is key. And she is considered one of the older skaters in Russia. And I yeah. think... You know, this kind of goes she's back. She's my to, age. Yeah, she's your age. Yeah, you know, she's considered really old. Yeah. It kind of goes back to what they're considering right now, which is like, should the age limit yeah, be, be raised? Uh, raised? Yeah. And I think, I think that will shed a lot of light in how people train, how the coaches prioritizes the well-being of their skaters, yeah. and I think seeing someone like her um, would have maybe pushed that a bit more. Yeah. And I think Yuzuru, I mean, has already done that. And I yeah. think it's already showing in all of the Japanese male skaters. Yeah. I think they're now thinking like longevity is key. Yeah. But I think seeing um, seeing her there uh, this year at the Olympics, I think would have maybe pushed that a bit further. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think the best people should be, are the ones that should be going to the Olympics, but mm-hmm. it would be nice if best people can stay at the top and stay healthy and stay at their mm-hmm. best for, for a bit longer. I agree. There's, I love the sport, but your mental and physical health takes priority over everything else. Yes. And on that note, Nathan Chen, last guy to discuss. Okay, you know what? Let me put it this way. Um, I, it's gonna sound weird, but I, watching him both in a short and long program, I'm brought back to the time he and I competed against each other when we were both in, at the intermediate level. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, he and I competed I at the intermediate level at regionals, and I it was me, him, Kevin Shum, mm-hmm. um, a couple other people. I think I like placed almost last, but whatever. <laughs> hey, the last time I competed against Nathan, Nathan, I also got like last. So. You know, it was interesting because I remember <laughs> watching him skate that time, and I thought to myself. He's definitely going to be an Olympic gold medal someday. A um, gold medal someday. And I'm happy that he yeah. got his moment. Um, and it's weird because, you know, there is something different about him this season. And I think there, it's because of that that I think he's able to skate the way he did this time around. Yeah. And I think just generally speaking, I think he's a great skater. Great choreography. It's yeah. very modern. I think he has some great jumping technique. I've always known that about yeah. him. Yeah. Spins, it's definitely up there. Like I think in general, when I compare his component scores to Jason, I still think Jason should have gone yeah. higher. But I think, again, that's just a bias. On different components, right? Like, for example, because of his Olymp- that Olympic moment with all the quads, I think mm-hmm. something like performance, 
give them higher than Jason even, right? Because maybe the actual perform or the ex- whatever, just like the performance itself, maybe. But then like you know the other kind of components that we're talking about, yeah. transition schemes, yeah. all that, mm-hmm. like so. Yeah. Um, with that said, I mean this is me going off tangent a little bit, but oh, Nathan needs new outfits. I the, I don't like the hot Cheeto outfit. I don't like what he was wearing in the short program. Although what he wore in the short program matched what he was dating to. Mm-hmm. But also just generally speaking, I wasn't a fan of the music he chose. Yeah, um, I wasn't it was fine. It was whatever. It, to me <laughs> it wasn't favorite. memorable, but I feel oh my god, I feel like all Nathan fans are gonna hate me mm-hmm. for saying this. But <laughs> but you know, I feel like people don't watch him because of the music he chooses and the outfits he wears. I think it's partially because, you know, he has all these gorgeous jobs, he does great spins, yeah. great choreography, it gets people yeah. up on on their feet. And I think more particularly in the gay community, I think there's a lot of guys who watch him because he's kind of hot. <laughs> it's true. I mean, here, here's the deal. I know a lot of gay people think this. And I kid you not, when I ask when I when I ask him questions when it comes to like comparisons, it's always like, oh Nathan. And the immediate response when I follow up with like why it has always been well, he's hot. Oh, interesting. So yeah. I feel like there's something there, and I feel like people something don't... for everyone. I, and it's true, there's something for everyone. Yeah. A- am I saying that he is? Um, what am I trying to say? Long story short, I think people watch him for a very particular yeah. reason. And I mean, the jumps are like consistently being able to do those kinds of jumps are definitely one of the reasons why it's so enjoyable to watch mm-hmm. him. Um, I was gonna yeah. say. Um, it was great to see that he looks so happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really great. Um, his consistency, as we just mentioned. There, okay, so I actually think that in terms of that, like his flip and his quad flip and quad left and quad toe, um, a, little, a little bit less so than other ones. If they're actually, I don't think they're that hard for him. They're really hard they're jumps, either. but I do not think they're that hard for him. He Why do I say this? One small example. I remember something <laughs> just popped in my YouTube feed. Some random video of him like at like this show, maybe a few weeks before Nationals or something. He's at a random show, and he just goes off and has a quad lutz. Like, that, you don't really usually do that like in a show unless it's not that hard for you. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I said this in another video, but he's so aerodynamic. He, he is. is. Yeah. yeah. And he's he's always been, like, you know, you talk about, like, some of the unicorns or whatever in skating mm-hmm. in terms of people who are just not unlike anyone else. Like, from the get-go, from his, when he was a child, and he was winning mm-hmm. juvenile, intermediate, or he won all of them, whatever. Like, he's, he's just won. so talented. He <laughs> definitely works really hard. But I will say he has incredible talent. I think there's like different people where some people you're like, wow, like you really just like worked hard for those. But like he is also just, he's one of the most talented uh, yeah. and hardworking. He's yes. well-rounded. One of the most talented. Yeah. Well-rounded. I think with a better choreographer, I think his musical choices could yeah. be improved, which would translate yeah. to his I think Elton John was at least, I think it was memorable, I think. <laughs> I was my favorite, but it's it's memorable. You know what? It was memorable, but it was memorable because they're not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Also, he almost fell on his footwork again, but that's fine. You know what is the deal with that? It's, you know what? Footworks are hard. They are. Scrap you know what? And that's why I love watching Ice Dance. Yes. Yeah. Like, anyone that can skate that way, Four yeah. minutes straight in a competition, mm-hmm. like you have my respect. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we talked about everyone. Uh, before we go, Marvin, what was your moment of the men's event in general? I'm putting you on the spot right here. Holy crap. Okay. Um, the moment? The moment for me. Than I would say. <laughs> oh, man. There were so many moments. I feel like it's hard to narrow down. You can pick like one or two or um, whatever. I mean, I do have a bias. I think Jason, just watching him skate the way he did, it's just, it brings tears to my eyes. Um, (laughs) um, You know what, on a positive note, I think, um, I think it was just nice to see Nathan get his moment for once. Yeah. Yeah. It's like he was like, if everything, which nothing ever goes as planned Mm -hmm. in the I feel like, but if everything goes as planned, he was supposed to be winning that from four years ago. He would he could have even won four years ago, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Like this was cu- in the coming for so long. And again it's the Olympics, you never know what's gonna happen. And also injury, COVID, all these things. But he was yeah. like supposed to win this event for mm-hmm. the last gazillion years mm-hmm. and he finally did it. So it is kind of nice to see that 
the person who's like supposed to win, they just like went and did it. Um, and it's, yeah, really great. You know, I think the moments that I thought was really sad, like it made mm-hmm. me really, really, really sad, was um, one, uh, Vincent having to yes. drop out. That yes. was a really sad that moment for me. So that was a maybe a more like negative moment. Yeah. But that was a moment for me. Okay. I'll just and then, it that way. Um, Roman just not him skating the yeah, way he just felt really, could have. Yeah. It was heartbreaking. Not seeing those two skate or skate but not do their best yeah. was a negative moment for me. But a positive, on a positive note, it was great to see Jason skate the way he did. It was great to see yeah. um, Nathan skate the way he did. And also, it's great to see represented or like more um, representation, like representation for once. Yeah. Um, Donovan definitely was. I, I don't know, like, if I had to pick one, I don't know if I'd pick him, but he was definitely one of my moments for sure, especially in the short mm-hmm. uh, for me. Um, my moments, um, yeah, I have to say Jason as well. Um, and then I would say Yuma. You know what? Yuma was such, um, yeah, yeah, I guess Yeah, that. and I could have said Shoma Shore, but I already said that, like, that was definitely a moment in the team event, so I'm not going to say that. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, I think Yuma's long even, and then Jason, probably both were guys. Jason also biased, because I grew up seeing with him a bit. Definitely a bias. I'll yeah, and, and, you know, we train with some of these guys, or <laughs> engage with them and stuff, and just seeing them grow up and stuff. Um so, but yeah, there were some really, really great moments of the yes. event. Okay, anything else you want to say before we're done? Um, you know, in terms of men skating, no. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm happy with how things played out in a way. Um, I'm curious to know what will happen in uh, the female event. Um, and in general, like, you know, I there's a reason why I continue skating today. It's, yeah. it's so fun. Um... I think I, I'm hoping that we get to a point in our society where, especially in figure skating, where bullying is not tolerated. Yeah, that and was that, really prevalent at this Olympics. Yeah, really and like prevalent. people are held accountable yeah. accordingly because I think that's really important yeah. to set the precedent from the get go. Um, and also, just I want to see more representation. I hundred percent different dog for a different video. Mm-hmm. That is potentially my like what I want to yeah. do. I don't know. I'm just like in my life. Like that's one of my most passionate things. I'm yeah. most interested in is they need increasing more diversity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that go behind that. But mm-hmm. yes, yeah, so. Great. Yeah. Um, thanks for being on, Marvin. Thank you. Uh, this was really fun. <laughs> Hopefully some of these noises weren't too loud and that you can hear hear us. Um, but yes, let us know what you thought of the men's event in the comments below. Things that you want to see. Anything else. Uh, this ended up being way longer than <laughs> I thought it was going to be, but that's fine. It's whatever. Uh, we had a lot of thoughts. Okay. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on that notification bell. See you next time!